Hello guys, this is Sam Presto from Sam Presto Films. Today we are going to be talking about DSLR camera. And we are going to be using this camera for the demonstration. Maybe you just got yourself a new DSLR camera and you don't know how to use it. So today I'm going to be doing a beginner's guide what you'll be looking up to, what you want to tweak, how you will actually utilize this camera to get a very good picture or a very good video. So this is for beginners classes, maybe you're using this DSLR for the first time or you've had it since but you really don't know how to tweak your settings and everything. So this is what I'm going to be discussing today. There's three major things you have to look at for when using a DSLR. The shutter speed, the ISO and the aperture. So those three major things that is what helps you in getting a very clean picture. So today I'm going to be talking about that, a very clean picture, a very clean video. So I'm going to be discussing about shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. So let me not waste your time. Let's head straight down to shutter speed. Shutter speed is the amount of time the light enters the sensor of your camera. So if the shutter stays open for a longer time, there's a lot of light entering the camera. But if it stays open for just a brief, a shorter time, then there's a lesser amount of light entering this camera. So when the shutter is open for a longer time, you have a very bright picture. But when it's open for a short duration, you have a very dark picture. So I'm going to be doing some demonstration to show you what I mean. But first of all, let me show you what shutter speed is. This is the shutter. This guy in here, when I slap, it snaps. This moving stuff is the shutter. Can you see it? It is the shutter. So the amount of time this shutter stays open will determine if the light is, if the picture is going to be bright or or dark. So if it stays longer time, you have a very bright picture, and if it stays a shorter time, you have a very dark picture. So let me let me do some demonstration on that. Okay, this is shutter of 500 by. 1 by 500 and you could see the picture and let me give you a shutter of 60 and there's a picture very bright so the longer the light enters the shutter the sensor through the shutter the more bright light you have but if it has a very short duration the less light you see on the sensor and you have a very dark picture that way and this another shutter by 100 and this is a shutter by let me see by 20 very white this is shutter by 500 yeah this is shutter by 60 reasonably bright this is shorter by 1000 dark so this is shorter by 1600 very dark so we just show a different shorter the one by 100 you saw how bright it was then we said the one by 500 one seconds to 500 one second by 500 because that is very fast, you saw that it's dark. Then we did one second by 1600, you saw it very dark. We did one second by 1000, <coughs> very dark. So, the less time on the shutter, the less time for the shutter to open, the darker the picture. But the longer time the shutter stays open, the brighter your pictures. There's also an effect you can generate with the shutter speed staying for a longer time, which is called the long exposure effect, whereby you get something like a motion blur. Where you see the streets in the night, you have something like a motion light blur. Guys, I'm, I'm going to be showing you that, but I have a tutorial on that. So if you want to learn more about that, click on the link above. Okay. When the shutter speed is open for a longer time too, it tends to record every, every picture. So what it means that the sensor is very fast, so it picks even the motion blur. So it picks, it creates an effect by getting a motion blur like this. Move. Sorry, go back. Yeah, see, you walk, then move again. Okay. So this, you could see a motion blur 
of him on the camera. So that is because the shutter is open. So, but go back, go back again. But let's tweak, let's put the shutter back to 20, then move. So it picks him very well. Then we, we could still see that it's blurry. Then let's take it up a bit again to 50, then move. So this picks a very clean image of him. So this is all about the shutter. Okay, let's go straight to the aperture. What is aperture? Aperture is the amount of light entry through the lens to the camera sensor. Don't get confused. I know you said that is the same thing with the shutter speed. Okay, let's see it this way. Aperture is like a door that has variable amounts of opening. Like you can open it very wide or open it very close. So why shutter just opens at a given time and closes? Opens at a given time and closes. Shutter speed is the amount of time the sensor is taking in light. Why aperture is the amount of light that you allow the sensor to receive. What do I mean? Intensity of the light and is determined by the aperture. Why the duration of the light is determined by the shutter speed. Aperture enters through the lens. Why the shutter is the amount of time that light that enters through the light stays. Okay, let's, hit, let's go straight to the aperture. Auto. So let's do this 3.5. We could see how bright 3.5 is. Let's increase the aperture to 5. Not this 5. Let's increase it to 8. This is 8. The detail is coming there. Now let's increase it to 18. 18 is becoming dark. Now let's increase it to 22. 22 is becoming very dark. So, at a reasonable stuff, so we will see that the lower, the more we open up our aperture, the brighter it becomes. But if we increase it, we close it up, the darker it becomes. Okay. Okay, from the demonstration, we could find out that our aperture, which is measured by the f stop, when I take it to 3.2, is very bright when I increase it. When I start increasing it to five, six, it becomes dark. To eight, very dark. And to 11, 12, it was very dark. There's something you need to know about the aperture. The lower your aperture, your f stop, it helps you in getting a very good portrait picture with a very good depth of field. But the higher your aperture, you lose the whole depth of field. So that helps you in getting your wildlife photography or taking a building where you need all the images to be on focus. Why the lower aperture helps you to carve out, to spot out, to put focus on a particular subject and blur the remaining picture of the background. Thank you. Let me demo, let me show you what I mean. Okay, with f-stop of 2.8, this is how the picture will look like. It's a very good depth of field. You can see the depth of field. But let's tweak it. Let's change the f-stop to, to 16. You see, everywhere is exposed. You, know, you lose the depth of field. Okay, with f stop of 16, this ball we get. Everywhere is exposed. Okay, that is it about the f stop. How to create a depth of field and how not to get a depth of field, depending on what you want to achieve. I have a tutorial, and you also know that when you move, this camera goes out of focus. And how not to get out of focus, I have a tutorial. Click on the link above to watch the video. Okay, moving straight to the ISO. And what is the ISO? ISO is the sensitivity of the image sensor. So the higher the ISO, the more sensitive the image sensor becomes and the more light we enter the camera. But the lower the ISO, the less sensitive the image sensor will become and less light we enter the camera. So the higher the ISO, they have a brighter image. The lower the ISO, they have a very dark image. But there's a disadvantage to that. The higher the ISO, you have noise, you have grain on the image. While the lower the up ISO, you have a very smooth, clean image, but darker. The same thing, the higher the ISO, you lose the details on the image. The lower the ISO, you could see the details and everything. So let me just show you some demonstration of what I'm trying to say. Thank you. 
let's start from here this is an ISO on one six have a very bright image this is an ISO on two on hundred have a very dark detailed picture so let's pick this this is an ISO on hundred let's check this this an ISO on one thousand so the ISO is you could see that this on one thousand it loses the detail then let's put our ISO back to four hundred Uh, ISO on 6,000, 8,000 ISO. ISO. Okay, you could see different ISO range and the details and the noise and the lower ISO has a very clean picture while the higher ISO has a very noisy picture and less details while the lower ISO has a very detailed picture and clean. Now that you know how to use the shorter the ISO and the aperture so you have you know how to tweak and combine the three of them to get a very good picture. Let's take some pictures. Okay guys, you could see the difference and you could tell from the camera settings and everything you saw how to tweak it to get a very good pictures. Okay, this is when you, mind you, this is when you're using this for the first time or you just bought it, you've not really used it as a professional. So this tutorial is just for beginners. So there's going to be in-depth tutorial on camera usage coming very soon. So if you're not subscribed to this channel, hit the subscribe buttons. For now, I'm signing out. This is Sam Presto from Sam Presto Films. See ya. Why aperture? You can maximize. You can let very big amount of light enter. So okay, let me go to let me go to this. Aperture. You can control the intensity of the light entering. Yeah. Okay.